Brothers and sisters, it's my great honor to introduce the next governor of the great state of Maine, our brother, Mike Michoud. Good morning, brothers and sisters. As you heard, uh, well, you probably didn't hear what uh, President Gerard said when I came out. He says, you're a cool dude. <laughs> well, I think everyone's waiting for the executive board to take up on that challenge. So it's, uh, <laughs> that got the biggest round of applause. So <laughs> but it's great to be here with you, uh, brothers and sisters, this morning. It's such an honor to have been invited once again to address the United Steelworkers. This is their 35th Constitutional Convention. But I'm even more honored to be here today, standing before you as one of your own lifelong card-carrying union member. I want to thank President Gerard and the Executive Board for the hard work that you do day in and day out, not just only for your membership, but for the working people all around this country. I also want to thank Tim Waters, and USW District 4 Director John Shin, and all the steelworkers in the great state of Maine for your friendship and your trust over a number of years. Today, I stand before you after nearly 12 years of serving the people in the state of Maine as their member of Congress. And it's because of your unwavering support I've received from the labor movement that I was able to be elected to Congress because of you, the labor movement. It seemed just like yesterday we were fighting to win my first two campaigns for Congress back in 20, 2002. I ran in a six-way Democratic primary. And then the general election, which political observers called one of the 12 most hotly competitive races in the country. And in that primary, a Republican political commentator said the following, and I quote, Labor is just a paper tiger. They don't have what it takes to elect one of their own." End of quote. Well, let me tell you something. That Republican commentator couldn't have been more wrong. And on election day, that tiger roared, roared like a lion. The labor movement in a show of unprecedented solidarity, put hundreds of volunteers on the street on election day in Maine to help me out, which helped me win the primary by three points, and then the general election by four points. In every election since then, I am reminded of what happened in 2002, but most notably, the primary and what my union was able to do for me. It's important because we have another election upon us this November. But in 2002, as the ballots were counted after the polls closed, the results in Milltown after Milltown after Milltown demonstrated the strength of the labor movement when we stick together. I'm just going to talk about a few of the results, just a few of the examples of the power of labor when they do stick together. In the mill town of Madawaska, in a six-way Democratic primary, I received 83% of the vote. 
in the town of Millinocket in a six-way Democratic primary, I received 89% of the vote. In the town of Medway, in a six-way Democratic primary, I received 94% of the vote. Now, in my hometown of East Millinocket, they actually had to bring ballots up before the shift change at the mill because they were running out of ballots. In this, I can't stress enough, brothers and sisters, of the importance of solidarity. In a six-way Democratic primary in the town of East Millinocket, I received 96% of the vote. 96%. It is because of you, brothers and sisters, that we were able to do that. You know, Congress is made up of back then and still is today, it's full of millionaires, bankers, lawyers, and because of you here in this room, you sent a union card-carrying, time clock punching mill worker to Congress. And I never have forgotten that. And for the 12 years in Congress, whether it's leading the Working Families Caucus or the House Trade Working Group, we fought together to protect Davis-Bacon uh, prevailing wages, strengthening Buy America provisions, fight to make trade deals more fair, pass the Affordable Care Act, and invest in, in our nation's in infrastructure to put people back to work. Serving in Congress with you along my side has been one of the greatest honors of my life. And I do love my job in Washington, but I love the state of Maine more. And like many of you out there, I've watched for too long while governors all across this country, some more than others, have wrecked havoc on state government, its people, and its reputation. Our governor in the state of Maine has spent years tearing down things pretty much since day one when he tore down the labor murals to state employees, to teachers, to passing voter suppression legislation. He's bullied people to get his own way. He denied access to health care for 70,000 Mainers under the Affordable Care Act, of which 3,000 of them are veterans. And he wasted taxpayers' dollars on bogus reports and a agenda that demonized poor people in the state of Maine. And it's time that we had a governor that will build upon people's strength, not tear them down, which is why I made that difficult decision to go back and run for governor in the state of Maine. Because, brothers and sisters, I have spent a lifetime fighting for higher wages, better benefits, and working conditions for working people. And I'm willing to give up a safe seat in Congress to keep doing that for the people in the state of Maine. And together, we can make history once again and clearly elect one of our own as chief executive of a state that's currently run by a governor who spent the last four years doing nothing but attacking working families. Instead of a black eye on labor, like Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker or Governor LePage, who actually, Governor LePage says he wants to be the next Scott Walker, you can set an example by electing a working man who will stand up for the working class, a governor who will fight for the hardworking men and women that made this country what it is today. The working men and women made this country what it is today. A governor who will expand access to health care, 
a governor who will raise the minimum wage to ensure that people can make an uh, a honest day's wage for an honest day's work, a governor who will strengthen retirement security for state employees and seniors in the state of Maine that depend on these programs. And unlike our current governor, who just last month called Social Security and Medicare welfare. Yeah, that's, he did, he called it welfare. It's unbelievable. He also said that climate change is a good thing because it's going to open up shipping lanes. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> but we need a governor who's not afraid to speak up about the hard-working men and women in Maine and all across this country. We can have a governor who believes in your issues, a governor that can lead by example, who's not afraid to put policies forward that other governors around the country can look at and say, yes, if they can do it in Maine, we can do it in our state as well. And a governor who's not afraid to work with other governors under the National Governors Association to make sure that we hold our elected official at the congressional level accountable when they start dealing with trade deals, when they start dealing with Social Security, when they start dealing with other issues important for the working men and women in this country. But to do this, it's going to take the effort of the labor movement that is bigger and more organized than what it was when I first ran for Congress. And believe me, it will not be easy. The good news is I'm ahead in all the polls. The, <laughs> plus, the bad news is I'm ahead in all the polls, which means both of my opponents are attacking me each and every day. And just the other day, yesterday, as I was flying down here, uh, we had Governor Christie, who decided to take a visit to the great state of Maine to campaign for our current governor, Governor LePage. And we learned that the Republican Governors Association has purchased nearly $3 million worth of TV ads between now and the election. But their deep pockets are no match for the collective strength of USW's members and our allies in the labor movement. Because we truly are a union that works. Since I launched my campaign one year ago, I've had no greater ally than the hardworking men and women of USW. But I'm going to need the continued support from each and every one of you for the next 83 days between now and election if we're going to be victorious. This is a race that is winnable. Just like when I first ran for Congress, when the Chamber of Commerce and the Republicans said labor was a paper tiger. They are worried that you will once again roar on Election Day, that you'll make sure that we have a working man elected as governor in the state of Maine. And the reason why they're so afraid of that is because they are afraid that we can show the country that it's okay to help working families lift themselves up. It's okay to have fair tax policy. It's okay to have environments and jobs in the economy that can still prosper. And it's okay that we can make sure that when you retire, that you still can put food on the table, buy the prescription drugs that you need, put fuel in your tank so you can heat your homes. That that's okay, and that's what they're afraid of. So brothers and sisters, I ask each and every one of you are you ready for this challenge? Yes. Are you with me this election again? Yes. 
Well, let's do it. Let's punch that time clock. Let's get to work. Make sure that we have a working member elected as governor of the state of Maine so we can show not only Maine, but the country that working people, if we stick together, we have the strength and solidarity. We will survive. Thank you very much, brothers and sisters. God bless each and every one of you. God bless the labor movement. God bless the United Steelworkers.